Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody. We all started making mistakes and we are still making mistakes. But today I'm going to tell you the most common beginner mistakes and how to solve them. So let's get to it. But don't forget to subscribe, please. So the first one is by Arlen and he says when I first started making music I had a stock fruity limiter on the master that never took off for some reason. I also pushed my instruments pretty loud in volume back then so in the end my songs were over compressed to the point that were pumping effect and blah blah blah. So here there are two problems. The first one in my opinion is not really a problem and is putting the fruity limiter on the master or not deleting it. But why if everybody says you have to delete the fruity limiter on the master why you say you don't have to do it? Because it depends on how loud you're making your song. The fruity limiter is not the best limiter out there and if you're making a song really loud it's gonna make it sound weird over compressed you're not really gonna hear how every sound sounds but if the sound is not reaching the threshold of the limiter it's not affecting at all so there's not a problem and the second problem is pushing way too much the sounds to the limiter for example to fruity limiter or other limiters sometimes what can happen is that you create like a pumping effect like a side chain on the on the song and the entire song and this is because you're pushing way too much your song but especially and most of the times is because there is way too much sub bass this is because the sub bass is reaching the threshold of the limiter way faster and the problem is that it's compressing a lot because the sub bass is there and when the sub bass is not there it's not touching that much the threshold so it feels louder. So basically the problem is that you have way too much sub bass, so try to control it. Sometimes it's just that you're pushing too much the song and you have to reduce it, you know, don't limit that much. The next one says, not knowing how to mix, so when it was clipping I turned the master down and it would end up at minus 17 and everything was plus 6 in the project. I don't really know what you mean, but I think you're talking that you mix it way too quiet. And actually there's not a problem here. That thing that some people say that you need your song at minus 6 dB is from the past, you know, it's from the vinyls. Nowadays there's not a problem at all. If your song doesn't reach the zero, it doesn't clip, you're good to go. You can have your song at minus 1 dB or you can you can have your song at minus 15, minus 20 dB. Actually, I have a song that I mix it at minus, I think, minus 25 or minus 27 dB. But that's not a problem. Then you master it and you boost the volume in just that. At the beginning, I didn't sighten anything and without any master, I just rendered it and uploaded it. Then I realized that it was all wrong. It happened also to me. I remember at the beginning when I started making music, there weren't that many videos on YouTube like now and I didn't know what was sighting. I knew that there were some songs that had the pumping effect, the sighting, but they didn't really know how to do it. And I remember they took me a lot, lot of time and a lot of videos to discover how that was made and with what plugin and all of that. And well, it was with Grossbeat and I hate that because yeah, Grossbeat is not a bad plugin, but you need to create four times the same wave table to create that sighting and it was so annoying. Then Kickstarter appeared and a really important one. Not using Q to remove unwanted frequencies and not using any effects at all. The track sounds so bad when I listen to it now, but it improved a lot in the past two years, so congrats by improving. But yeah, I always say this, EQ is one of the most important things on mixing. In my opinion, the two most important things are EQing and balancing right the volumes. If you don't do this, your song is gonna sound bad. Yeah, of course, you need reverb, delay, distortion, saturation, and blah, blah, blah. But if you don't have EQ and a good balance, it's gonna sound bad. I didn't even use FO Studio when I started. I used this site called Beatbox and it was horrible and then it switched to Online Sequencer and then BattleUp and finally FO Studio. I didn't know these websites. Maybe should I make a, a challenge on these websites? Like I did with Soundtrap by Spotify? Let me know in the comments. I didn't cite in the bass on breaks. Well, depends on what you wanna do. I mean, the, I hear some songs that they have citing in the bass on the breakdowns and there's no kick. So why do you want to do this? Yeah, sometimes it creates like a good rhythm and nice effect but most of the times it doesn't really work it's better to just have the bass as it is without any sighting of course if there's a kick you sighting making all sound more stereo than what it should be this happens a lot of time when i'm doing feedback live streams i hear this a lot there's like an imaginary line in the sides that you cannot cross if you do this your song is gonna sound bad to make sure i don't cross this line i always use the ozone imager so there's a line and i can go down below that line so it gets red i don't want to get there yeah sometimes you can be there you know like just a few milliseconds but not all the time and especially the frequencies that you have to take care more about this apart from the sub bass is the mid lows like from 100 to 100 hertz to 5 600 hertz for example the other day i was mastering a song for another guy and this band was way too wide and it wasn't that wide that it was crossing the line no but it was super wide and it felt like not tight and muddy and dirty so be careful with those frequencies and i'm not saying you need to make them mono no but instead of making like this if this is the max you can go make them more or less like this put the kickstar on the kick thinking that the plurine helped to the kick <laughs> this happened also to me you know it's called kickstart so i thought it was 
for the kick and it was like, why I want to do this on the kick? Thinking that louder is better happens to all of us and to people that is not music producer. Sometimes I'm at the cars from friends. There's a song that is so cool. They boost the volume to the max and I'm like, man, it's distorting. It's not sounding good. Too many sounds. Be careful with this. Sometimes it's good to have a lot of sounds, but sometimes it's so difficult to mix it and it's going to sound way too full and it's not going to sound good. Thinking too much. This is still happening to me. I take a lot of time to mix songs. My own songs, when I mix for other people, I do it really quick and I do it good. But when I do mine, I'm like, oh no, maybe I'm not hearing it right. I'm going to wait until tomorrow to hear it again. So I think way too much and that's bad because I take more time to finish the songs. The next one says writing chords. Used to put random notes to mimic the three chord design until it didn't sound distorted. I don't really know what you mean by distorted. Probably you mean dissonant. And most of us, especially if we didn't make any musical classes, we don't really know what is a key, how to stay in key and all of that. So at the beginning, my advice is to always try to learn this. The basic things is what is major, what is minor and how to use it in your songs. But if you want to know how to make chords without knowing anything about music theory, I made a video a long time ago where I show you all the tips I use to make the professional chords just without knowing anything about music theory. So go and check it out. But after this video, please. Don't skip this video now. Added reverb to the kick. Well, actually, that's not bad. For example, in hardstyle and some techno styles, there's reverb on the kick. So it depends on the genre you're making and the style and what you want to achieve. Hoping quick improvement. Yeah, we all thought at the beginning that in one year we were going to be in the DJ Mac, and that's not the truth at all. It depends a lot on how much time you spend every day. If you just spend maybe like one hour every week, you're gonna get better really, really slow. If you spend like 30 minutes every day, you're gonna get better faster. But if you spend eight hours, every single day you're gonna get better super 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 fast so maybe yeah in one year you're super good but if you just spend one hour every week you're not gonna be that good in one year unless you are a super talented producer and the last one and really important one not marketing my songs marketing in promotion is key you can have the best song in the best label and you can get just 10,000 streams and nobody knows you you need to work on the marketing and the promotion you need to upload things on the social media it doesn't matter if it's YouTube TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. I blow things so people know you, who you are. When you're gonna release a new song, try to post some things about this new song like two weeks earlier. Don't post it just the day that it got released and never say anything again. Maybe try that your followers want to listen to that song because you put some previews on Instagram or on YouTube or on social medias. Or maybe try to do some games so the followers maybe share your song or whatever. But try to work on the marketing and the promotion. This way you're gonna grow. So guys, these are some of the most common mistakes that happened to me that this happening to a lot of you and to a lot of producers basically all the beginners but the biggest 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 solution that helps in all the problems is just practice you need to practice a lot just practice as much as possible and this way you're gonna get better and you're gonna solve these issues by yourself you're not gonna do these mistakes and everything is gonna get nice and cool and well mixed and better and guys if you have more beginning mistakes just leave it down below in the comments of this video and nothing else thank you so much for watching leave a like subscribe and see you in the next video